It's January 1st, and I live north of like three quarters of all Canadians. And what's missing from the picture behind me? Yeah, there's no snow on the ground. Like, none at all. It's a little weird, don't you think? There's a plane in the sky, but there's no snow on the ground. So this video here is going to be pretty quick. There's something about the Rum Runner, that car right there, something about it that's been bothering me quite a bit. And I think I finally have what it takes to fix it. Maybe. We'll find out. Yeah, sorry about the kind of weird like framing going on here. Hopefully this angle works out though because I wanted to show you something going on down there that's been making me crazy since I got this car back together. And I'll just show it to you. Uh, I can shift into first gear. That's fine. When I shift into second, however, that happens. Every time. You know, obviously I'm not gonna just sit there every single time I shift and reach over and push it down. But it makes me crazy because it's just, it shouldn't be like that. And I thought about how I could try to fix that, possibly get a longer shift boot if I can. And this one's made for this car. It's not that it's some like third party thing that I was trying to make work. I think I actually got this one from LMR. So it's not even like some random eBay thing or anything. So instead of trying to replace the boot with a different kind of boot, I thought I would try something I've never done before. And that's get a short shift kit. So a short shift kit is uh, this whole assembly right here. And this assembly, I think, goes on pretty much like that. And it changes the lever that's underneath the shift boot that interacts with the transmission itself to tell it what gear to go into. So it's got this little ball down here that fits inside of a cup, and it pushes that cup back and forth, and that cup pushes back and forth the linkages that tell the transmission what gear to be in. In addition to having a different fulcrum location, meaning that the place where it pivots from is higher up, so that there's a shorter part at the top, and a longer part at the bottom. That's what gives you the short shift. In addition to that, it also should be a little bit tighter than the assembly that's in there right now, either because it's not worn out from existing for 28 years, or also because it supposedly is built to actually be a bit tighter. And since I've never installed a short shifter before, this is gonna be new to me. I've never experienced one. So I'll be able to tell you if it's cool or not too, because if it bothers the heck out of me, I'll tell you. Now this one here, I actually didn't have to pay for, thankfully, that's a good thing for me right now. This one came from Amazon because I'm on the Amazon Associates program, which I've probably mentioned before. And that means that if I put a link down below in one of my videos and someone clicks that link, I get a couple pennies from the sale. It doesn't cost them anything extra. It just gives me credit for driving the sale over towards Amazon. And every once in a while that builds up to 30 or 40 bucks. Um, it took about four or five months for it to build up to 40 bucks, but that was enough to buy one of these. I also got this little thing here. This is a replacement for the cup that that ball fits inside of. The one that's down there, I think, is nylon or some other kind of plastic material. And so I'm hoping that the one that's made out of uh, bronze is a little bit more tight. Um, might be noisier. I have no idea. We'll find that out together. So uh, I think the first thing that I have to do is I have to remove this shift ball. The shift ball was bright orange when I bought it. And it turned out kind of a cool, like, I don't know, pearlescent white translucent color. So I don't hate it but it's not what I bought. I bought it bright orange and it took like a month for it to just sun bleach into this color for some weird reason. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's like disappointing, but it's okay. I'm not gonna change it. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta get down there with some other tools and, and get the lower boot up. Okay, so this whole plate here has to come off.
This is something that's probably going to want some kind of a thread locker, but I'm going to figure out how I like it first. And then after I figured out how I like it, then I'm going to go back through and put thread locker on it. Kind of cold, huh? Let's see if we move that up one. So this short shifter feels like it's probably about right still. It's in the highest position it has, but it's still a little bit lower than it was and the fulcrum is also higher up. As far as how it feels, um, it feels pretty good. So far it feels, I think, a little bit tighter than what it had before. And as you can see, I can go to first, second, and when I shift into second, this has still got some pliability to it and it doesn't pull that up. So, so far, so far that's a win. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up and then we'll go for a drive. Yeah, there's nowhere in particular I need to be going right now, but we should be able to find out pretty quickly if this thing works. So if right now we're neutral. You gotta check if you're in neutral all the time, right? And we'll see how easy it is to get into reverse. So that's reverse. Well, in a way that was successful because I can shift first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and it feels nice and tight, and obviously it doesn't pull that back, so that's a win. But something that I didn't really think too heavily about, and now I understand a little bit better. The original one of these has this rubber isolation right here, so it's got actually rubber on both sides and grommets that go through it, and these really long bolts that pass through and hold this upper portion to the bottom portion. And that probably is more important than you might think because now I hear some of the transmission gear whine noise and I know the transmission didn't just miraculously go from great to bad. It just went from being isolated by this to not being isolated anymore. And so now there's a conduit for that kind of high pitched gear noise to get up into the cabin. And I don't think that I can take just this and put it on that bottom one even if these have the exact same spacing as the part that's on it, I think that would just return the same problem I already had. Uh, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna try it. Although this isolator does come apart, there's not really a place for it on the portion that's down there. So uh, I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna deal with that, but I'm gonna try and do something to deal with it. Unfortunately, snow is forecast for tomorrow or the next day, and so I'm not gonna be able to go for another drive for until the snow goes away. And it looks like we're probably gonna have a pretty heavy one. So um, this is gonna have to get picked up a little later in the year. So far, this works perfectly well. It's just gonna be a little annoying to hear that gear whine, and that's my next goal to get rid of that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this quick little update. Um, thanks for watching.